Hallelujah. Woo, he is risen. Family and friends. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad he rose. Are you glad he rose? I'm so glad he rose. So glad. I was sharing with Pastor this morning. I said, you know what? God is so good. And you know what I like about him patient? As I think someone said in the song, he is so patient. As the Holy Spirit began to speak to me this morning, I said, Lord, you're so good and you're so patient. Yes, yes. For those of you, try not to cry, you know I get emotional. Today is Resurrection Sunday. Yes, 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 yes. God loves us so, so much. much. I can't express so much. the love of God. Yes. You have to experience it for yourself. Yes. But he has given those of you that does not know him in the resurrection of his power yeah. today mm -hmm. is a new start, yeah. is a new day. Yeah. Some of you might think you just came because it's Easter Sunday, but no, it was the love of God that drew you here today. Yeah. Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday today. That is God's love. That is his grace. That is his mercy that is drawing you unto himself. So I was rejoicing for those that don't know him. Because I said, Lord, this is the day and the opportunity for them to get to know you in the power of your resurrection. And then I began to think about my life. I said, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Because I was yet in my sins like some of you. On my way to, hell. to a burning hell. My God. But one day I came into the doors of the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can get saved outside, but I came into the house. Yeah. His dwelling place where his spirit where dwells. Where his the spirit temple. is. His temple. Yes. And I heard the word preach. You must be. You got to be. Born again. You can't live in self-righteous. You have to be born again of the Spirit. And I began to dwell and I said, Lord, thank you that your dying was not in vain in my life. Mm. Thank you, Lord. You know, sometimes you think things for granted. I say, thank you, Lord, thank you, that Lord. you're suffering, yes. that you sacrificed for me. was not lost. It was not all in vain. And I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because he lived. Now I can live. Mm -hmm. And I think I heard someone say earlier, they think the house is the cause. Of, that ain't living. Mm -mm. No, it's not. That is not living. It's not living. You don't live until you have an encounter with the Holy Spirit and you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's when your life begins. Woo! You don't determine man by the things that they consist of. But you can't. The devil gives gifts. But one thing I know about him, he doesn't allow you to enjoy them to the fullest. Only God can give the perfect gift. Only God. Only God. I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because of some of you, I've been where you were. I was the woman at the well. I was broken. I was lonely. Had a beautiful family. A mother who loved me, and mm -hmm. I loved her, and would do anything, anything for me. And the reason some of my mores and integrity and characters now is the things that she taught me. Mm -hmm. And I praise God and I cherish it and I know she's in glory right now smiling down and saying, yes, that's my door. <laughs> you have to come to the place that you can't do it on your own. I've been there. Talk about it. Done that. Yeah. Looking for love in all the wrong, wrong places. places. Been there. 
Been there. Done that. I know what it's like to live my life without Christ. And the Bible is true. Sin is only pleasure for a season. For a season. Yeah. Only for a season. Only for a season. And when that season is up, it's up. You back to where you are like a drug addict searching, looking for something else to satisfy that flesh. And all you need is your spirit to be filled with the Holy Spirit because he said he satisfies the longing soul and filleth it with joy and gladness and peace and love. So I want to encourage you today. And y'all hear me say it all the time. You right, uh, Sister Sam. He writing it down today. He said, I gave them a chance today, April the 4th, 19, I mean 2021. Yeah, he's writing it down. He's wrote down every time you had the opportunity to accept him, truly accept him, but you denied him. I say it again. He's writing it down. April the 4th, 2021. It was told to them that I died for their sins. Because I died for your sins and you have accepted what I died for, you no longer have your sins. Sins is a problem. Sin separates you from the love of God. Sin separates you. He died for your sins. He didn't just die. He died for our sins. And saints, people, humans, if he died for your sins, why are you yet still in your sins? He want to know. He said, I've already paid for that. I've already paid for it. Why are you still doing that? Why are you still saying that? Why are you still living that life? I died for that. Why? I'm sure Jesus is saying, why? He has feelings just like you have feelings. We hurt each other's feelings. We hurt his feelings. Because there was an awful debt that he paid. I can't even look at it. Reading is just enough for me. It was awful. It was awful. As the Bible instructs us when we were yet in our sins. And he knew we were sinners. He knew what we were doing. He knew. But he still died for you. Hoping and wishing that you would accept what he did. That you may be free from the clutches of sin and death. Because death wasn't made for us, whether you realize it or not. The Bible says death was not made for us, but it was made for the devil and his angels. It was not made for the people of God. But if you're in your sins, guess what? You're gonna be right down there with the devil and his angels. Not because God sent you, because you sent yourself. Because you did it yourself. God has paved the way for us. He has given us light. He has given us light. We can choose to walk in the light of the Lord, or you can stay in darkness and keep bumping into stuff, what the devil have you bumping into. I don't know about you, but I like to see and know where I'm going. The devil can't take me nowhere. You know, the cat, because I've let him drove before. I had to jump out the car. 
because I didn't want to go there anymore. Are you willing to risk your life and jump out the car? Or you want to stay riding with the devil? I had to jump out. So I was like, I don't want to go there anymore. Jesus had made it available that I don't have to go there anymore. So I had to change my direction. I thank him for allowing me to rise up, to rise above my problems, my circumstances, my situation, my feelings, my emotions. Jesus did that. And I hear y'all talk all the time, first lady, you no, it is not first lady. It is God's grace. I take no credit for loving people who I know don't care a hill of beans or don't care about me or stabbing me. That's God's grace. The Bible is true. That's Lord, help me, Jesus. We read it all the time. Elder just pray to God, forgive them their trespasses. We say, as we forgive, we just. You're reading the stuff. Do you not believe the stuff that you're reading? This is real. This is not a show. Within myself, I can't love anyone. But because he loved me, I can love you. Regardless of what you do to me. Regardless of how you feel about me. How you feel about me has absolutely nothing to do with how I feel about you. Another little nugget, as my mother gave me, because one thing I've learned, you can't control what people do to you, but you can control how you respond. You can respond the right way. A kind answer turns away wrath. Right. Kill them with kindness. <laughs> Love your enemies. Do good to those that misuse and despitefully use you. That's the word. I don't just read it and just read it. I read it because that's my life. This is what I live by. This is my map. Because without this direction, I will be yet still in my sins on my way to a burning hell. Probably sleeping with your husband, drinking with you, cussing with you. Oh, hey! This is real! Y'all playing church. I'm transparent. He saved me. When you're empty, you want to be filled. But what I came to tell you, you're being filled with the wrong things. Let the Holy Spirit love on you. He won't hurt you. He won't hurt you. He won't hurt you. Time out. Time out for playing rutch and roulette with your life. We used to hear a long time ago, tomorrow is not prompt. No, this very moment is not prompt. Some crazy fool could come through these doors and shoot all of us. Will you be ready? Do you know where you're going? If you can't look me in the eye and say, First Lady, I'm going to be with Jesus then you ain't got it. You don't have the experience of the cross. You have not encountered the resurrection of Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. You don't have it. You don't have it. You don't have it. We need to get it together, saints. We need to get it together. And me and the Holy Spirit, I said, Lord, I'm not nursing demons. Either you want it or you don't. I'm not finna shove it down your throat. 
I'm not going to make you want it. I'm not going to call and hound and bug you. Either we're going to be connected in the spirit, because we're not going to be connected in the flesh. That's what's wrong with some of you. You want to know us emotionally. No, we need to be connected spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be emotionally connected to you. I want to be spiritually connected with you. He has risen. I want to see his resurrection in your life. Time out for saying things. Show him you love him. Show him you appreciate him. Don't be ducking and dodging from pastor, myself. pastor and myself. We don't have a heaven and hell to put none of you in. He sees everything. He hears everything. So don't live safe for me. Please don't. Don't come to church for me. Please don't. Because one day, your feelings and your emotions might get in the way, and you might not like me that day. And you know what? You be ducking out the door. But I'm still holding on, praising Jesus and you out there. You got to know whom you serve and whom you believe in. We're just the messengers. We got to live and do the same thing you got to do. I got to live saved. Pastor got to live saved. I got to love pastor. Pastor got to love me. I have to respect him. He has to respect me. Hey. And with our marriage. Thank you right. A three, four cord is not easily broken. God is right there in the middle holding both of us together. Yeah. He get on my nerves. I get on his, but you know what? We ain't going nowhere to sin. So you might well just get over it. Look, look, make it easy on yourself and get over it and just come on up here and hug me and give me a kiss. That's what we say, you just get over it. You know, get over it. Cause you, Cause you ain't going nowhere and I ain't going nowhere. So ain't no need of making, trying to make one another miserable. You might well just get happy. And that's the relationship we have. That's my friend. That's my friend. Yeah, that's my friend. That's my husband. But he's my pastor, but he's my friend. I trust him. I trust him. I know the Lord didn't give him to me. But I chose him, but I thank God I see the Lord in his life, and I praise God for a uh, wise choice. Because that's what's wrong with some of the women. You want a man, but you don't want a godly man. Another subject, another time. Because you know I can work with that. I can't speak, I wouldn't want, I, I want a godly man. I want one that would leave me. I like sleeping at night. I don't like laying in the bed of my husband and I don't want is he with another woman. I don't have time for that. If I don't trust you, you can't be in my life. Cause you're not gonna add no extra sorrow to my life. The devil doing enough of that on his own. I'm not gonna bring it in on my own. If you don't love me no more, be a man about it or be a woman about it and tell me I don't love you no more, I wish you the best, I'm leaving because I want to be in sin. You can't sugarcoat it because I want to live in sin. I don't want to go your road no more. I don't want to live righteous no more. I want to... I want to live my life. I thought you
your life was in Christ. In, eight, in 89, when I gave my life to the Lord, that was, it wasn't mine anymore. My life is in him. He dictates what I do, what I say, where I go. It's not about me. It's about what he says. That's what's wrong with the world. It's my life. I can live. No, it's not. Once you name the name of Christ, it's no more I, but it is Christ that lives inside of me. Do I have a witness? Has anybody here risen with Christ? Are you, are you dead in your sin? Dead in trespasses and sin? This, it's Resurrection Sunday. He has risen. Whether you believe it or not, he has risen. And I give you another nugget. You ain't got to bow now. You ain't got to bow now. But one day. And look, Elder Franklin, I want to see him. You're going to have to bow. One day. And if I were you, I would bow willingly. Because I would hate to be on that day to have to bow unwillingly. Because after that, then probably the words are going to be depart. From me. I don't even know you. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. I'd rather give up too much than not enough. I would rather give up too much. Because the Bible instructs us to lay aside every weight. It may not even be a sin, but it's a weight. It's keeping you from drawing closer to the Lord. The Bible said, lay aside every weight and every sin. Don't so easily be sick. So it may not even be a sin. But I'd rather give up too much than not enough. Because it could be a weight that's weighing me down. That's keeping me from going forward. Lay it, lay it aside. Lay it aside. It's weighing you down. You don't need anything in your life weighing you down. People, let them go. One thing I've learned, if you have a so-called friend, media, you listen, and they say they're your friend, but they're encouraging you to do wrong against God's word, I'm standing flat foot and tell you that person don't love you, that's your enemy. That's your enemy. You better run from that person. Oh, I, I, they, they don't love you. If they love you, they tell you the truth, whether they hurt your feeling or not. Because it's about your soul, not your feelings. And I tell the kids all the time, if it's going to hurt me, tell me anyway. I want to know. We need to get it right. I get over the hurt, but I don't want you lost. I don't want your soul going to hell. I'd rather be hurt now than you perish. You hear me, Cameron? You hear me, Ariel? Y'all hear me? I don't care about your feelings. I'm working for your soul. Because the devil is not playing. He's deceiving these children. He got them sneaking. Doing all sorts of stuff. And I want to challenge you parents. Monitor what your kids looking at. Monitor their cell phones. Do like my God baby mama do. She, we know everything that our baby's looking at. I challenge you, 
Don't give them that leeway to hang themselves. You got to parent and instruct these children. The devil is making it too available for them to hit their hands on so much stuff. And it's wrecking them. It's confusing them. Yeah. I want to challenge you, parents. God good enough for you? He should be good enough for your children. That's good parenting. That's good parenting. That's love. Love corrects. Love instructs. Love leads. It don't just tell you and do otherwise. No, it's being a good example. A good example. Time out for do what I say and not what I do. No, kids going to do what you do because they do what they see. Men and women of God, be good examples. Teach your children about the resurrection, son, and what it really means and the really meaning of that and, and living safe and living holy and the women living chaste, the men living chaste. It's a good thing to be clean and kept. If somebody try to tell you that's not, that's because they're jealous. They didn't do it. They want you to be with them. It's a beautiful thing to live a chaste life. that your wedding day would be extra special. That's beautiful. That's what God wants. That's what he meant. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. Amen. I did not get up here to say all of this. But God's will will be done. I'm only trying to encourage you. This thing is real. Hell is real. As the nose on my face. And if you don't get it right, You're going to find out just how real it really is. And once you're there, ain't no coming out. These books, ain't, ain't no coming out. It's appointed once unto man to die. And then the judgment. So don't think you're going to experience hell and you're going to say, oh, no, I ain't ready. I'm going to come out. Oh, no. That's just a book. Don't you believe that foolishness? Once you go, you there. You ain't coming out. So don't think you have all this time. Because you don't. You do not have time to be playing with the devil. For one, he don't play fair. For two, he's an enemy of your, of your God. Three, he know where he going and he won't you to go with it. But I'm not going. I've made up my mind. Have you made up your mind? Have you made up your mind you ain't going? I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not going. So I want to encourage the people of God. Today is Resurrection Sunday. And if you don't know Jesus in the part of his, his death and burial resurrection, I want to give you the opportunity to get to know him today. Only you know if you've had that encounter with the Lord. Because your life will be changed. You wouldn't walk the way you used to walk. You definitely wouldn't talk the way you would talk. The places that you would go that you know they're detrimental for your spirit, you wouldn't go to those places because there's been a change. 
if any man, woman, boy, or girl, is a new creature in Christ, there has to be a change. It has to be a difference. God didn't make a mistake when he died on the cross for your sins. He knew exactly what he was doing. The Bible said he loved us so much that he gave up his God body to become a little seed. To grow up that he may die for me and you, for us. And then he rose that we may rise. You don't have to stay down. He has risen. And he wants us to rise with him. Do you want to rise with Jesus? Stand to your feet. Don't be ashamed. God is so good. I was just thanking him this morning. I was like, Lord, thank you for resurrecting my life. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. I'm so appreciative. Y'all look at me now, but I was a mess. A mess on my way to a burning hell. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Tell the Lord thank you. Tell him thank you. Thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. Lord, thank you for making us whole again. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Will there be one? You want to rededicate your life. Maybe you once knew Jesus, but you kind of fell off and you think that you can't get back. But today is Resurrection Sunday. He wants to resurrect your life. He wants to make you new again. All of the Do you want him to come into your heart? I, I, Man, he's not going to force himself. Come right. into my heart. I'm not a beggar. Pastor can tell you that. Come into my heart. Okay. Maybe you already have it. Come into my heart. Right. Let's we'll get ready for communion. Oh, no, Let's no, get ready for communion. You're doing good, baby. Okay. Everybody knows Jesus. I will be your Everybody's walking right, talking right, living right, loving right. You will be mine. Amen. All of the time. Hallelujah. Why don't you come? Why don't you just come to the altar and let the first lady pray over you? Come to the altar, children. Come on. Come into my heart. Samantha, there you are. <laughs> Come into my heart. Oh, oh. Greg, help us. Help us. Come on, help me. And I will be yours. You will be mine. Come on, the altar's open. Come on. All of the time, time, time. The Lord love you. The Lord love you. He loves you. Why don't you let him into your heart right now? Come into my heart. Come on. Come into my heart. Lift your hand, Pooh. Lift your hand, baby. Come into my heart. That's my daughter. That's my baby. Come on, Pooh. Come into my heart. He'll do it. Come into my If you ask him, he will. 
come into my heart. Come into my heart. Doesn't matter what you've done. Come into, doesn't matter the mistakes you've made. Doesn't matter how you turned your back on him. If you ask him, he's so good and so merciful and so kind. Come into my heart. One more time. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Everybody out there, lift your hand right now. Close your eyes. Say, Lord, sing it with us. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come on, ask him. Say, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come on, ask him with all of your strength today, all of your power. Come into my heart. Come on, come on. Come into my heart. All over this place. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And I will be yours. be mine. I will be yours. I will be yours. Oh, tell him. You will be mine. Tell him, say, I'll be yours. I will be I don't know about you, but I love him, and I'm never taking it back. I'm so thankful that he loves me too. Aren't you? I know my wife loves me after all these years of marriage, but before her, I knew Jesus loved me. You can't live life without love. And if you don't have anybody that you think loves you, try Jesus. He'll love you with an unconditional love, an unchanging love, a love that'll never fade away. Oh, daughter, nobody'll ever love you like Jesus. Nobody. Nobody. Now, our first lady has gave us a great word of encouragement. Yeah. I, 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 I love that girl right there, boy. That's my heart right there, man. That's just... And, you know, I love what Elder Sam said today that She's not like Job's wife. You know. Never had to worry about that. With her, it's always get up and have faith. <laughs> and I'm so thankful for that. And I'm so thankful for all of you here in your Easter suit, and Easter time. But it is about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, and I'm not going to preach to you because we've had some if whether you recognize it or not, we've had two good sermons. Elder Sam and First Lady. <laughs> and I'm so thankful for Living Waters because Living Waters is the place that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can get dressed up and prepare my sermon all I want to, but if he doesn't want me to preach, I'm not preaching. I'm so thankful for that because it's his house and we're his people. And we're so thankful and so glad about that. I'm just so thankful for everything. But can I share, just stand to your feet so I won't go long. I just want to share two scriptures, and I'm not even going to preach. I promise you. I promise. Just two scriptures. And I, I just want to share them with you because when we talk about the resurrection, you know, when we do talk about it, 
we, we often think that the resurrection is only for the righteous. Are y'all listening to me? We only think that saved folk are the ones that are going to be resurrected in a body. But the Bible teaches and preaches something totally different than that sentiment. A lot of people only feel that in that great getting up morning where all the saints are going to rise. No, 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 brothers and sisters. The Bible teaches that there is a resurrection of all dead. And, and, and Jesus makes the resurrection of all men uh, possible. All mankind is going to be, this is what First Lady was sharing. All mankind is going to be resurrected. Please hear me. What Christ does is he ensures that all men will be resurrected in a body to give account for the deeds done in their body. So don't think that you, if, even if you don't accept Christ, you don't have to worry about a body. No, you're going to have a body forever and forever. Now, where you go, what kind of a body you're going to have and whether you're, where, where you go in that body, that, that's what you're deciding right now. And that's what, what First Lady was trying to share with you. So just real quick, I'll, just, I, I tell you what, uh, Minister One is so skillful up there. He, he can help me and he'll have this and, and I'll know it'll be there. But John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29 and Acts chapter 24 and 15, just these two verses. I want to put them in your eye gate and I want you to uh, put it in your ear gate so that you'll know that the resurrection is going to happen for me. I just need to figure out which one I'm going to be involved in, right? I need to figure out which one and which body do I want in the resurrection because I'm going to be resurrected. My spirit and my soul is going to be resurrected in a body. When you're dead, you're done is a lie. You're not done. You're going to live forever. And so uh, do y'all see this? I'm not going to preach it, honey. We're just going to read the scripture. Is that all right? Now, I want you to read it with me, all right? This is the words of Jesus. Look at what Jesus says. One, two, three, read. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. Next verse. And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. There are going, there's going to be a resurrection for everybody. But now, what type of body you going to have and which resurrection you going to be a part of is up to you. Now, one more scripture. Acts, one more scripture. I'm not preaching. I just got to show you this. This is what First Lady was trying to tell you today. Now, now watch this. This is verse 15. Can y'all read a little bit longer with me? All right, now, now watch this. And, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and of the unjust. So, so you, when, you, when you die, you're not done. You're going to live forever. You are going to live forever. But what makes Jesus so wonderful? See, see, you need to understand this. I'm not preaching. I just want to explain it. Thank you, evangelist. I, 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 just, I, just, I just want you to know because, you know, y'all love me and First Lady, so we can't let you go to hell, man. We can't. We got to do everything in our power. To, uh, such a sweet people as y'all, and I let you go to hell. I need to burn myself for not telling you the truth. I'd be, I'd be like that crooked doctor who just took all your money knowing how to heal you but didn't heal you. That, that, you know, but I'm not going to be that way with you because you're precious. You're God's people and God loves you. And, and, and I owe it to you to give you the unadulterated truth of God's word. There is a heaven and there is a hell. And like Elder Sam preached today, if you're not living right, if you're not born again, you're going to hell. And your spirit and soul, according to Luke 16, you're going to go down into hell in your spirit and soul and wait for your body to be brought back to you in the second death, Amen. in the judgment, yes. in eternal. That's what's going to happen. You do not want that. You want to take advantage of this wonderful thing that First Lady was talking about, how Jesus and we're celebrating Resurrection Sunday. That's what we're celebrating. We're celebrating the fact that you don't have to go to hell. 
because even though resurrection is a mandate from God for every man, boy, and girl, your resurrection can be the resurrection to life and not resurrection unto death. You can make the decision. You have the choice. You have the power of free will to choose heaven over hell. And you have that opportunity right now. And that's, that's what we do. And, and when we feel the spirit, what you're feeling is that, 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 that resurrection power. Because it's the spirit of God that brings about the resurrection power in a life. And so, brothers and sisters, if you're not saved, if you haven't been born again, don't keep, don't keep missing this opportunity to receive the spirit of God and receive the resurrection unto life. It is the most important thing you can receive. You're going to have a body. Every man, woman, born girl is going to have a body in that day. What type of body, that de you, you, you determine that. If you'll accept Jesus, you'll get the one that Carol and them was singing about today, the age of ages in the Christian forever and forever, ruling and reigning in life and glory and honor. And you'll get that one. But if you don't, then you'll get the other one, the one that has all of the worms that die if not, and all of the cancers and all of the other diseases and all of the other things that is going to be inflicted on the devil and all of those that follow him. Oh, he's got a judgment coming to him. And I don't care how many tennis shoes he perpetrates. I don't care how many videos he puts. He's got a judgment coming to him. And I want to tell y'all, brothers and sisters, and, and I want to say this to the parents, and, and, and my wife touched you a little bit. Y'all are so precious. You're doing the best you can. Put a little bit more prayer with it, but even when you've prayed, I, I, Taj, I'm so, I, I'm so uh, taken by Taj and Tanya. Hey, I think they're wonderful parents. What, not good parents. I think they're wonderful parents. And, and you love your children, and all of you love your children. When they reach a certain age and they decide to go out into sin and, and, and get involved with the devil, that is not your fault. Your only responsibility and requirement is to give them the right way. You show them the right way. You teach them the right way. You pray for them. Now, it's their will that determines whether they're wise enough to accept it and go on into life. And anyway, you train them up in the way they should go. The Bible says that they'll be back. But pastor, this got a hold of them. It doesn't matter what gets a hold of them. God's word is still... Are you with me, Selena? You keep doing what you can do and leave the rest up to grace. But once they go and they're on their own, honey, pray, but don't let them boggle you down now. You go ahead and have you some joy. Have joy. Have joy in your heart always. Have joy. Have joy. Have joy. Have joy. Have joy, have joy in your heart always. Have joy, have joy, have joy in your heart always. Have joy, have joy, have joy in your heart always. on in the house of God and praise him and worship him and keep on loving him and keep on serving him and, and just give your kids over to the Lord. It's all you can do. I, I tell first lady, I say, boy, if I had a son, he'd be a preacher, he'd be this, he'd be that. She say, no, nah, he'd be just as bad as everybody else. <laughs> she keeps it real. She says, because your personality and honey, he would be a hand Full. And when she says that, Carol, I always go back to when I was little, when I was a little red. And I said, oh, she's right, Lord. <laughs> You'd be that same finger swiping across the icing of the cake. <laughs> Getting whippings all the time, little boy that I was. You know, and it's all right to get whippings. Amen. The world is telling you that you shouldn't whip them, but... Have you noticed the more you don't whoop them, the more out of control they get? Somebody gonna whoop them. 
Might as well be somebody that love them. And anyway, doesn't the word tell you if you beat them with the rod, they will not die? <laughs> I'm not preaching, dog. I'm not. I'm just trying to give y'all a little word. Stand to your feet. We are <coughs> Pastor Marcus, am I in line? Am I in order? Okay, Pastor Marcus says he's going to come and take. Okay, come on, Pastor, because we got to do communion.